Hi, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Now, one important question I get asked often about fish oil is, what's the best form? So today, I'll quickly reveal the best forms of fish oil, what to look for when purchasing a fish oil supplement so you don't get ripped off, as well, a great alternative to fish oil if you happen to be vegan or you simply don't like fish oil. So let's get started. Now, fish oil is a dietary source of fats known as omega-3 fatty acids, and you can get them from food or supplements. So you can do so from food. The best would be fatty fish, such as salmon, mackerel, and trout. Now, you need to eat these foods at least three to four times weekly to make sure you get the optimal amounts of uh, omega-3s and make sure that these fish are wild caught and not farm raised. Now, the main problem these days with eating fish is the heavy metals found in our oceans, such as mercury. And this is why it's typically best and easiest to just take a fish oil supplement. So at this point, we need to know what's the best form of fish oil supplements. Now, when shopping for an omega-3 supplement, always read the labels carefully. This is really important. You should also check the following. First of all, the type of omega-3. Many omega-3 supplements contain little, if any, of that important EPA and DHEA, the most important types of omega-3s. So make sure your supplement contains these at the highest doses. Again, the old, next we want to focus on the amount of omega-3s. A supplement you know, may say on the front that it contains 1,000 milligrams of fish oil per you know, caplet. However, on the back, when you read the EPA and DHEA, it's only like maybe 320 milligrams. Thus, most of it, the 780 milligrams of it, is just regular fish oil, not that EPA, DHEA, and basically, it's unneeded extra calories. Next, you wanna focus on the form of omega-3s. For better absorption, look for FFA, which is the free fatty acids, or TG or RTG, basically triglycerides and reform triglycerides, as well as the PLs, which is phospholipids, instead of or rather than the EE, which is the ethyl esters. Next, you wanna focus on purity and authenticity. Try to buy products that have either the GOOED standard for purity or a third party seal. These labels have shown to be safe and contain what they say they do. And lastly, you wanna focus on freshness. Omega-3s, unfortunately, tend to go rancid. They're prone to going rancid quickly. Once they go bad, you know, they're gonna have that foul smell and become less potent and even harmful. Always check the date, smell the product, and see if it contains an antioxidant such as vitamin E. Also, it's best to refrigerate your fish oil at all times. Now, let's talk about alternatives to fish oils. Again, fish oil supplements are typically derived from fish, such as salmon, anchovies, sardines, and mackerel. These will contain the highest and most important EPA and DHA omega-3 fats. However, you can also get that important EPA and DHA from krill oil, which is small shrimp-like animals called krill. Now, krill oil has a distinctive red color, while regular fish oil supplements are typically yellow or gold. Krill oil is usually also more expensive than fish oil. Now, krill oil has been advertised to be better absorbed than regular fish oil and thus a lower dose would be needed. However, clinical studies have not shown this to necessarily be true. Lastly, if you happen to be vegan or you just don't like the smell or taste of fish oil for whatever reason, there's another great source of plant-based omega-3 fats that contain that EPA and DHA, and that's algae oil. Algae itself contains or includes about 40,000 species that range from single-celled microscopic organisms such as microalgae to kelp and seaweed. Now, all types rely on the energy from the sunlight and ultraviolet light and carbon dioxide. Again, make sure you read the labels to see the important levels of DHA and EPA concentrations contained in the supplement. Personally, I just take fish oil pills. I keep them refrigerated. I take them with the meals I eat, preferably at the beginning of the meal. And as far as the dose, just depends on many factors, your goals and how much you weigh and all that stuff. But I typically suggest at least one to two grams to as high as five to six grams daily spread out 
with your meals. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and share it with other people. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification icon. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch and listen. And I wish you a very happy and healthy day.